So why do we use args and keyword args in Python functions? That's what I wanna answer in this one. So let's go ahead and take a look. Here's a really simple function. And if you run it, it's not surprising what's gonna happen, just hello world. So the key here is in any given function, if you pass in an argument now, what will happen with this call? If I run it, I get an error and it's saying that it takes no arguments. So this is where args come in, or star args. This actually is a argument collector. It collects all of the positional arguments into this variable, and so now I can actually reuse that, or print it out in this case, and now I can see something really cool, and I now see that it says the hello world, of course, the string originally, and then all of the arguments that are passing in. So if I pass in other positional arguments, I will see those things as well. So we can, oops, not that. We can see this in action, and what do you know? So it's now passing in all of those arguments. But of course, every once in a while, you pass in a keyword argument or key value pair, and you do something like this. So if I save that and run it, what's gonna happen is we get a unexpected keyword argument key. So there's a couple of ways on how we can handle this, of course. First way is by actually passing in key equals to none or some sort of default value here. This would actually accept that single key. But what if I actually passed in another one like ABC123 as well and ran this one? Well, this time it's gonna say that it got multiple values for argument key. Hmm, that's a little strange here. Well, there's a couple of reasons for this and that's because of these positional arguments this is actually in position one, and then also this, right? So this is where things can get a little tricky if you're not actually designing your functions that well. But what we can also do is think of keyword arguments in a little bit of a different way by using a keyword argument collector with two stars and keyword args here. So now if I actually print out what the keyword arguments are, I am now getting all of my arguments correct, or at least collecting all of them. So again, if we were to do this a little bit differently, let's actually put it in positions now. I'm gonna get rid of all these extra ones. So if I actually said ABC equals to none here, what we should expect to see is, well, another error, that it's getting multiple values for keyword argument ABC. And that's because keyword arguments, in this case, can still be positional. So this isn't just positional arguments collector. This is just arguments that aren't keyword arguments after all of the positional arguments are done, right? So in other words, if I get rid of this one and now press in something like ABC and try and do a string like this, well, what's this error gonna look like? If we do that one, a non-keyword arg comes after a keyword arg. So this might seem like a bug, but it's actually a really nice thing to know that first off, all of the either positional arguments like this one, arg one, right? So this is a positional argument, it's not a keyword argument, but any argument that comes before args is gonna be in one of these, right? Unless there's keyword arguments in there as well. So if I get rid of this and reassociate these things, what we'll see is something rather interesting. So we go ahead and run that. And now we see it says, hello world, there are no positional arguments, no collected positional arguments. And then there's just this dictionary of keyword arguments. So the only positional argument is going in here. It's no longer going inside of args. So of course, if I get rid of that, it now will go into hopefully what you think it goes into, which is just running into the args. Okay, so why do we actually use this? This is maybe starting to get a little complicated for you, but the reason that we use this is for functions that we don't fully understand everything that's going on in them, or those functions have many different features that you might not be aware of, or you just don't need at this time. So there's a lot of reasons to use args and keyword args. They're also a safety measure against running against errors, like we saw here, like uh, something like this, right? Running against those kind of errors, in cases where you might need that. I'll give you a really good example of this, and this is coming from Django and function-based views. And I'll actually leave those things. So let me come in here and we define my random Django view. 
Okay, so often we'll get a request in here and let's just say that that's all we're gonna be returning. So I'll just print out the request. Okay, so what we wanna do with this is we usually put it into a URL. That URL calls this request and it passes the argument of request in here. And just in this case, I'll just print out what that argument is um, like this, okay? So then we go ahead and run this and not surprising, we will get the request coming through here. But in your URL patterns, sometimes you'll have something like this where it's a path, so uh, my product and something like ID, right? So if you actually did that, what this path ends up translating to is ID equals to, you know, some ID, okay? So hopefully right now you see that this is a potential challenge with how I defined this view. And so let's go ahead and run it again. And what you should see is an error, right? So my random Django view got an unexpected keyword argument ID. So that just means that this view is not ready to accept that keyword argument of ID as we've already discussed. So a lot of times in Django views, you might see something like this, keyword args, and no ID in there, but just simply keyword args. And now if we print out what those keyword args are, we can see that some ID is actually coming through. Of course, this is from the other one, but some ID is coming through now, and we can actually use this for, you know, product.objects.get ID equals to keyword args.get ID. You know, you could do something along those lines. Uh, there might be more efficient and better ways to do that lookup, but the main thing here is how we actually accept args and keyword args. Now, if it sounds a little bit complex, it's actually not that complex. I probably added maybe too much context to it for some of you beginners, but even if you are a beginner, just try these things out. Like try everything that I just showed you with this code, because that's really how you'll start to understand args and keyword args. And the best way to try it out is to break it constantly. That's how you learn things new. So if you like this one, let me know in the comments. I will do more questions like this where we do just a quick deep dive on simple conceptual things that maybe are a lot more complex than they are at first glance. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. See you next time.